Right now, it is our Friday pleasure to welcome in the guy who tells us what to watch. He used to say what to go to the theater to watch. Now it's what to stay inside and watch and listen to. He's Michael Snyder, everyone. Hey, guys. How hey, are Michael. you? Hope you're well. Hope you're well. You know, the state motto of New Hampshire is live free or die. Well, with all these anti-quarantine protests around the country, I'm going to make a mint off my live free and die bumper stickers. I'm feeling really good about this. Um, this live free a, and die. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, this is going to be a good one. It's, you know, anyway, uh, it, it's amazing. This past week was the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. And I don't think there's a, a better time to celebrate all that dirt. But, you know, um, as for the other crisis, you know, you can kind of hug a tree without worrying about infection, you know. The poison oak, maybe. Uh, I would recommend washing your hands afterwards. I mean, you don't know where the branches have been. But this is my preamble <laughs> to telling you. This is uh, this is your preamble, is it? Wow. Yeah, it's a, hey, Michael's planet, got a preamble, Brett. Planet of the Planet of the Humans is a new documentary produced by Michael Moore, available for free on YouTube. And it's uh, pretty fascinating considering this past week was Earth Day because, you know, we're in the middle of this crazy pandemic. And this movie takes a look at uh, how the environmental movement um, is basically uh, as hard as they try. They're actually continuing to make things bad because apparently solar panels and windmills create a lot of other problematic issues um in terms of the environment so it's almost like damned if you do damned if you don't so it's not an uplifting experience to watch planet of the humans but it's it's an uh, an enlightening and eye-opening one for those of us who are worried about the environment i'm glad you mentioned it because it was actually tweeted at us this week and i haven't seen it yet and it sounds as though it's really going to be quite revealing in, in in his discussions of alternative energy as not necessarily holding the promise in terms of i guess refuse and other stuff i, I haven't seen it at all but I, i'm looking forward thank you for reminding me that's a that's a must watch for me this weekend yeah for free uh, written and directed by uh, moore's pal jeff gibbs and it's not, again when it's over you're going to want to like take a breather or have a cocktail because you know <laughs> Uh, well, anyway, listen, yeah. let's, let's raise... I'll already be four cocktails in by then, but all right, thank you. <laughs> hey, listen, today uh, is going to be the premiere of what um, might have enjoyed a theatrical release in another era, Extraction, which is an action movie available on Netflix right now, written by Joe Russo, who's one of the filmmaking Russo brothers who are best known for writing and directing Captain America Winter Soldier, which is my favorite Marvel movie, and Civil War and the last two Avengers films, but... Uh, neither Russo directed Extraction, but it stars Chris Hemsworth, who is Thor himself, of course, playing a mercenary uh, tasked with rescuing a drug lord's son. And the John Wick style violence is over the top and a lot of fun and very diverting. And one scene in particular is worth the price of the stream. Uh, you know, well, let's move on to something else, too. True history of the Kelly gang. Now, I don't know if you know much about Ned Kelly, the Australian outlaw, but um, he's a legendary character. And this is a very punk rock retelling of his life and times, uh, starring 1917's George McKay as Ned. S.C. Davis, who was on, uh, in The Babadook as his mom, who's kind of a hard ass, who does what she and her, you know, she has to do to survive. Russell Crowe putting on the pounds as a bush ranger who is Ned's kind of mentor and other uh Notable cast members, Nicholas Howe, uh, Charlie Hunnam. It's a good cast, and this is sort of a grime-encrusted, violent bit of postmodern myth-making, and it's based on the novel of the same name, True History of the Kelly Gang. Uh, Peter Carey, He was an outlaw, was though, wasn't he? He was a bad yeah, guy, yeah. I thought. Yeah, he, yeah. Was, okay. he was also kind of you know, one of those mavericks that, that gets extolled to the, the, the heights of legend. You know, oh, It's kind of like a Bonnie and, and Clyde type story, then. That's fair. This uh, The book by Peter Carey won the 2001 Booker Prize, and it turns out that Ned was descended from, are you ready, cross-dressing Irish bandits known as the oh. Sons of Steve, and he wow. decides to use this brand. <laughs> yeah, thank you. He uses the brand to take on the British occupying forces, and so since he fought the British occupying forces, that kind of elevates him uh, as kind of outlaw hero. Uh, oh, I but see. I thought, okay. I thought this was kind of, um, it, it was involving. I appreciated the performances. You know, it's not the world's greatest film, but, you know, it, it definitely entertaining. It held my attention. Again, it's called what? It's called True History of the Kelly 
gang, and it's available okay. on demand. You just have to do a little research, a little uh, Google search, maybe Hulu. I don't know. Um, uh, let's uh, go on to one more here. Uh, to the Stars is a very tender, is it the antithesis of the Kelly gang? A uh, very well-meaning and kind of familiar look at a misfit teenage girl growing up in a small, wind-whipped, oppressive Oklahoma town in the 1960s. This girl, Iris, is bullied by her classmates. She's kind of a, a super nerd, and she's belittled uh, with her father by her bitter, self-absorbed mom. And then friendship develops with Maggie, uh, a bolder, uh, self-assured girl who moves into town with her family under questionable circumstances. And thus, Iris begins to find herself. You know, the butterfly emerges from the cocoon, etc. But there are secrets, and uh, the crap hits the fan. It's kind of formula, but done with heart. Uh, and beautiful cinematography, and the girls, Cara Hayward as Iris and Liana Liberato as Maggie, are really, really good. And one quick note, Tony Hale, who you know is the goofy aide to Julia Louis-Dreyfus and Selena uh, on uh, Veep, plays the father of, of the Maggie character, and he's basically a bastard. And I was like, wow, you know, stretching a little, Tony. But um, as much as it sounds like a chick flick, good coming-of-age movie. Uh, to the stars. And just finally, I want to mention Abe, because I love a good foodie movie, and Abe is one that mixes family drama with the foodie movie and transcends both genres by actually being about culture clash in a really organic way. Abe is 12 years old. He's a wannabe chef living in New York City. His dad is an atheist Palestinian-American, and his mom is a somewhat more devout Jewish-Israeli-American. And so wow. he's sort of a... This is sort of a recipe, uh, sorry, a recipe for family conflict when the grandparents get together in the same room. So Abe hates that, and he wants to bring everyone together by feeding them these culinary creations that he's developed by apprenticing under a very cool street food vendor named Chico. But, you know, hard to bridge all those years of ingrained animosity. Nice work by Brazilian filmmaker Fernando Grostin Andrade, and the kid who plays Abe, uh, Noah Schnapp, uh, you might know him from Stranger Things. He's very, very good. Uh, so, you know, those are some movies that are available. Well, well, what is that called again, Michael, please? Abe. 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 Oh, it's called Abe. Abe. Okay, I'm sorry. Abraham. Oh, it's, 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 no, no, it's, it's fine. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so re review for us. Can you give us the list? Albert, I thought I asked you for a list so at the end I could wrap him up like a real professional would. <laughs> oh, the true history of the Kelly gang. No, I think all Do you need to do... To the stars. Uh, to the stars, yes. Okay, there you go. Now, I um, I want to mention that I just finished what I think a lot of people have already finished is Ozark. It's three seasons, oh, and yeah. it's really... Look, you got to be up for a crime thriller with a with a dark side, and there's violence in it. So it, it, it's not for everybody. I mean, even for me, I had I was having nightmares the, through a couple of episodes, I mean, uh, after I, I turned off the... But we, it is also riveting if you're up for that. So Ozark, a lot... It was... It's been streamed by a lot of people. And Succession, which I really liked, which is on HBO, there are three seasons of that. I think they're coming back for a fourth season, but, you know, there are three seasons. And that's a story of a, you know, a wealthy family like the Murdochs, like media empire type family. That's a really good one. And now, and this is why I wanted to mention it with Michael on the line, uh, we just got into this unorthodox, which we'd heard about as well. well about Did the you? Jewish community, yeah. Yeah, about the, uh, the woman who wants to leave the Hasidic uh, Jewish community. And she flees to Germany. This is all in the first few minutes of the first episode, so I'm not, you know, there's no spoiler yet. Um, and I've only just gotten into it. It's only four episodes, so if you're not up for a, you know, super binge, it might be good for you. It's called Unorthodox. Uh, and just while I mention it, it made me think of a documentary I saw, which was so powerful. And this was a few years ago. I think it, won it was an award-winning documentary, though, called One of Us, which is about a real-life story, and this is based on a real-life story, too, trying to leave that Hasidic community in New York. And it, it, the three different stories, as I recall, and, man, it is, it's brutal. I mean, you know, oh, it's, like I, a, uh, it's like the Amish. They don't want you out. <laughs> you're in, you're in for know. life. I give that film four oives. I'm telling you, man, it really, <laughs> honestly. Uh, by the way, if you haven't seen The Plot Against America yet, people, um, it's probably available on HBO On Demand. It's three episodes, uh, excuse me, six episodes and done. It's based on, we talked about it before, it's based on the Philip uh, Roth novel about an alternate history uh, wherein Roosevelt is defeated in 1940 by incredibly popular celebrity uh, and ill-fit uh, politician uh, Charles Lindbergh, and man, it is worth the trip.
Uh, I have heard the same thing. I've heard it's amazing. And that's real in the sense that Lindbergh really was trying to become president. Yeah, oh, no, 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 it's true. So this aviation hero, does this sound familiar? A celebrity, uh, uh, who, by the way, is an anti-Semite and Nazi sympathizer, uh, Mm. for real, Lindbergh, uh, not fit to lead the nation, wins the presidency from Roosevelt in 1940, and, of course, all hell breaks loose, particularly in the Jewish community, and uh, so relevant in 2020 America. And if you haven't seen it, I, I highly recommend Worth Every Second, especially for the Emmy-worthy performance by Zoe Kazan as a dedicated and beleaguered New York, New Jersey-type Jewish housewife trying to keep her family together in the face of uh, tragedy and her own sister's bad choices. The sister and, marries kind of a collaborating rabbi who um, play, it was played by John Turturro. Sister's played by Winona Ryder. Um, this is... Wow. And what's it called again? It's called The Plot Against America... And I give it many thumbs. If I had enough thumbs to... You it would know, be all thumbs, is what you're saying. I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I am all, all thumbs right. about the plot. Michael Snyder, America. we love the visits. Until next Friday, thank you. Yeah, babe. All right. There you go. We'll wrap things up next. Mark Thompson, KGO, 810.